And hey, everybody, welcome to another Coffee with Jesus. I'm your host, Gary Schumacher. And uh, I am, uh, I got up this morning and realized I was horrified there was no coffee for me. I'm drinking tea up in here. <laughs> so, not exactly having coffee, I'm having tea with Jesus this morning. <laughs> But I hope you all have some coffee out there. So this is my 19th installment. And today we are going to be talking about elderly parents. I have an elderly mom. Um, she's going to be 90 the uh, day after Christmas, December 26th. Um, my mom used to always joke that she having a birthday a day after Christmas is always like, yeah, my hair mom just held back one Christmas present. <laughs> so, uh, that's the the drawback to having a birthday around Christmas, I guess. But um, and then my father, he passed away ten years ago, so my mom's a widow now, and uh, she's going to be ninety. I don't know how she's done it, smoking all those L and M cigarettes and, <laughs> and carrying on like she used to do. She doesn't smoke anymore, but um, she does. It wasn't the epitome of health in the. 60s and 70s and or the 80s for that matter but she's still with us that means i come from good genes good stock i hope so so let's talk about elderly parents this morning um i'm sure there's a lot about a lot of you out there that have elderly parents or caring for elderly parents um, my mother lives in uh upstate new york with my sister who's retired nurse and who'd better to look after my mom than her and uh my sister is just became a grandmother herself so congratulations love you uh, sister eileen and um it's a true blessing we all have in the lovely Gemma. um and i can't wait to meet her so i'm going from full circle here from elderly to the just born all right and they both need care and um so let's see what it says here in ephesians chapter 6 verses 2 and 3. honor your father and mother this is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. That children are to honor their parents is a lifelong commandment and a promised blessing. When adult children are faced with the uncertainties that come with elderly parents and their care, God would have us remember that he is good and he is with us wanting to reward us for obeying his command to honor our moms and dads. Yet with age comes loss of capabilities and mental capacities, and too often the elderly are considered among the least of us. But Jesus tells his followers that whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, 40. We can respect and honor the care for the elderly parents, thinking about how we are serving Jesus himself. And remember that someone we in turn will be elderly parents looking towards our children to take their part in caring for us. Ooh, that is a thought, isn't it? Especially some of you out there that are my age thinking about one of these days, our children, my children, who I can't get to clean their room, <laughs> taking care of me or my wife, my children, who I, it's, it's Halloween and I can't get them in on time. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, my children who were, uh, I, I get phone calls from the school to tell me that they're not on the honor roll <laughs> are going to take care of me someday. That is a scary thought of the future. But then again, I'll bet my mom and dad thought the same thing. Not that I ever had to take care of my mom and dad. I would if I could, if I needed to. Um, I loved them both very much, um, even you know, my father's gone. But my mom was a uh, just an integral part of my upbringing in my life. And uh, she, she is and was a good mother to me. She uh, She's the reason why I... I am what I am, and I am who I am today. She read me the Bible when I was a little boy. So did my sister Eileen. Uh, the women in my life played a huge, huge role in my upbringing. Um, I would say more so than my father did. Um, my father, you know, my father did some manly, the, the manly things, fishing, fishing, and that baseball games and things like 
like that. But um, my mom uh, was always there when I needed a shoulder to cry on. Uh, she was, she was, my father never gave much uh, empathy uh, for my problems as a teenager and things like that. Um, not to say that my father didn't love me or anything. I know he did, but uh, he uh, he was uh, he had his drawbacks, and um, we all do. Yeah. We're all rough along the edges. If you find a if you find a perfect father out there, there, there's no such thing. He lives in heaven. That's the only perfect father. We all have our drawbacks. I've made my mistakes raising my kids. He made his mistakes raising me. We all do. It's tough. It's tough raising kids, especially in this stage day and day and age in this stage of the game as well but uh also what i could like to say is that i did used to work in skilled nursing before i do and what i'm doing now i wasn't a nurse i was it was in the uh i ran the building i was in the maintenance department and um so i kept the air conditioning running and the heat on and all that good stuff the machines going the electricity on that type of thing but i had a day-to-day -day with these people and this was some serious serious people these people belong there we had um alzheimer's patients and stuff like that and you know they would what they call twilight at a certain part of the day where they would just get weepy and start to cry at one minute and then he would angry the next and it, it's very difficult and it's very sad that what happens to us as we grow older and um when we get older we're going to need care if, especially if you live to be that old and uh not only do we need care, we're going to need care. We're going to need love. These people needed love. And it used to break my heart how sometimes these children of these wonderful people would just get dropped off here and they would rarely, very rarely go to see their mom or their dad, uh, depending on who they, who was in the, uh, in the home there. And it would just break my heart. And then what happens is the staff becomes their family and the staff is very busy. Uh, I can assure you of that. And sometimes they just leave their rooms and wander the, the building and they're just looking for somebody to talk to and someone to just listen to them. And I had this lovely, lovely old lady. She was, her name was uh, Josie. And she, I would just stop by her room every single day. And she had this roommate, Joan, and she, she uh, had a thick Italian accent and they just, I would just sit, I could sit there all day and listen to them if I had the time, but they had just the best stories they did from a bygone era of what people will never know and never realize. Now, not everyone in there had Alzheimer's. These were two high functioning elderly women here, um, mentally, um, physically, they had other issues. They were in wheelchairs and things like that. So they needed care. And, um, they are just amazing people and we we can't write them off we need to take care of them now i'm not saying that every person just dumps grandma in a home and it walks away but trust me it happens it does happen and during COVID was the saddest part um there were people in that home passing away and their families the people that wanted to go see them couldn't because the building was in lockdown and that was it just broke my heart it did that these people couldn't come in and just even say goodbye to their loved ones and imagine how they felt so what i did was it was around christmas time because they wouldn't let any priests rabbis ministers anyone in there no one unless you work there so they wouldn't have any religious services which i used to have on sundays and uh so i decided to get my old gideon's bible out and I read uh, from the Bible on Christmas, uh, around Christmas time. It wasn't Christmas. I asked permission to do that. And um, so I read it over the speaker system of the, of the uh, building. So I read the Psalms 91. And um, as you know, it's a fairly long psalm. But I figured during COVID-19, um, it was a fitting uh, psalm to read to them. Because things seemed so bleak and... Um, I just wanted the people there to know that God still loved them and their loved ones loved them too. It's just that they couldn't get to them, you know? So I'm hoping the people that did pass away, that they're, 
they they didn't pass away alone that god was with them and uh they're in heaven now you know so that's all i'm gonna say about that today uh, i just want to wish everybody a happy friday and uh if you have an elderly uh, mom or dad and are still with us go over to their house today or, in, or wherever they are and give them a big hug and a kiss and tell them gary said hello <laughs> so let's bow our heads heavenly father thank you for bringing us all together here on this friday morning and i pray out there today for all the elderly people that are suffering from debilitating physical problems from diminished mental capacities and may their children love them and take care of them and honor them like the bible says because they are the people who raised us and the reason why the world has a future today they instilled in us great things and sometimes those things are ignored but sometimes they're brought on to the next generation so with that lord ease their pain lord and when this time comes welcome them into the kingdom of heaven and with that lord i pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen all right folks you have a great rest of your weekend i will see you guys saturday night i got a big thing going on here um i had to cancel my uh heretic hump day so i'm turning heretic hump day into a live stream and man do i have some clips put together i had started working on a heretic hump day and something happened with a family member so i just had to shut it down um so be here um saturday night 7 p.m and uh, i i promise you will not be disappointed all right god bless you take care and see you saturday <laughs>